All right, here we go. Here is the timer. This is the little container that I 3D printed myself. It says timer on it. There is all of the cutouts for the nodes, for the LED, for the buzzer, and for the rotary potentiometer. It has hinges, but it doesn't have a functioning locking mechanism. This is my code, which you will be able to see through the file. And once I click run, major project, what's the countdown? It asks you for the countdown. So let's say 15 seconds. So once that's on, you can see a visual countdown. The LED flashes as well. So once there's five seconds left, it starts giving a buzzer. And that last part was when it indicates that the time is up with a little siren noise. And then the code turns off. Right there, right there. So stop is equal to true. This rotary potentiometer is very useful because you can add and subtract seconds if you want. So let me just fix that. Let's run it. I will add 15 seconds again. And now, let me use the rotary potentiometer. There. That's adding 10 seconds. 20 seconds. 30 seconds. Subtracting 10 seconds. And meanwhile, this is all updating. So if we stop subtracting seconds, it'll just keep counting down. LED will keep blinking by the second. And once the time eventually reaches under five, there will be an audible countdown. And then there will be the siren that activates. So the rotary potentiometer uses voltage in order to sense at which point it should add seconds or subtract seconds. Right now in this position, it does nothing. If it's in a different position, a little bit lower, the voltage is higher, therefore it adds 10 seconds. If the voltage is larger than that within a certain range, it adds a different second and so on. If the voltage is at the highest voltage there is, then it subtracts the seconds. So, here we go. Time is almost up. And there we go. If we were to look inside the timer itself, we would see that there is a little port for the cable. We would see that there are lots of exposed wires, however, there is no way that I was able to conceal them, but the main board itself is concealed under here in a very compact little setup. Looking at how I designed the 3D printed box over here, I used Tinkercad in order to design the first iteration with this large box over here that you can see. You can see it a bit better this way and the first lid, which wasn't very effective, and the second one, which was much better. And if we go on the processing, here it is. I can set whatever infill I want, whatever profile I would like, and it would tell me how long this would work for. So if I was to process it again, it would take about two hours in order to heat it up and to process this print, and then eventually print it. 